All right, so admittedly, I've been struggling lately to come up with shortcut tutorials, and that's different for me. Now, I understand that that's mainly because with me creating videos, my phone is on iOS 18, my iPad is on iOS 17. I really don't wanna create no more tutorials around iOS 17 when I'm actually using iOS 18. So it put me in a little bit of a conundrum. So what I decided to do over the next couple of, I guess, tutorials is scour the internet to see what other ways we can do add-ons for shortcuts. And since I'm running iOS 18, everything that I'm gonna show you will work when you install iOS 18 on your phone when it's actually publicly released, which is kind of cool. So with that being said, we're starting with Toolbox Pro. Now, this is Toolbox Pro right here. It adds on 130 plus actions, as you can see right here. Now, for me personally, I like Toolbox Pro because it gives you some actions that you just can't find in shortcuts. Plus, it just it soups it up in a nice little way. So this is what we're going to be looking at. I'm going to show you 10 actions that are 10 actions that I like. But here's the deal. Keep in mind with these 10 actions that I'm going to show you, you might find better actions out of that 130. I'm showing you the actions that jumped out at me. And in some cases, you have better add ons that do it a little bit better than Toolbox Pro, especially when it comes. So for example, if you look at Toolbox Pro, and you look in that dark mode, that action is great for automation. However, within Toolbox Pro is not as good as that same exact action inside of another app called Actions. So you have to just, honestly, you just have to play around with it. Some of them gonna work really good. Some of them just ain't, that's the nature of the beast. But with these 10, these 10 actually do work really good and that's what I'm gonna show you. All right, so here are the 10 actions. We're gonna start at number 10. And as you can see, if we click into here, this is a really simple action. This action allows us to quickly blur an image. So if I click play right here and navigate to an image, you'll see the output of that image is going to be blurred as you can see. The cool thing about it is we can change the intensity of the blur, which is right here. So if we want to change it, we can grab this rocker and we can just slide it up and down and that changes the intensity of the blur. So at this, with this, you can still see a little bit of what the image is. If we make it, if we make that intensity stronger right here, then we don't get to see anything. And that's number 10, which is allowing you to quickly blur images. Okay, so number nine is gonna help you out. So if you like me and you have an automation that when you connect your phone to your car, it automatically starts playing your audio, number nine can help you out. Let's take a look at it. All right, so this is, is audio playing. If audio is playing, we can get it to do something or we can get it to do something else. So in this case, we can see audio clearly isn't playing, but because I'm running iOS 18, I'm not 100% sure if this is a glitch or not, but let's take a look at what's gonna happen. It says, this shortcut is basically saying, is audio playing on my device? If it is playing something on my device, I mean, it's yes, then I want you to do this. All right, so I click play and is outputting yes this is a glitch because audio isn't playing on a normal phone that's not running beta with all the normal updates it would have it wouldn't have ran that because it would have came back as a boolean as no or false whichever one you want to say and that shortcut wouldn't have ran however it's kind of cool when you connect it you set this as your short to act your phone is audio playing and if audio is already playing then it disregards that automation if it is playing if it isn't playing then it's okay to connect and start playing your latest podcast or audio book can't tell you how many times i'm listening to a podcast it'll stop my podcast and it'll instantly go over to whatever the latest audio book is i'm listening to at that specific time this solves that Okay, so as a content creator, one of the things that you can do, especially if you're a YouTuber or something like that, is transcribe your audio. Meaning I could take this video, run it through shortcuts, and it can give me an output of the in text. So it's transcribing a video. Sure, I have to go through and clean it up, but it'll get me started, which is better than starting from scratch. Let me show you this. All right, so here we go. The, it's only one shortcut, which is recognize speech in and it could be a video or it can be audio now the cool thing about this is if you look down here this is going to automatically copy it to clipboard so you can open it up in a url phrase whatever case may be it can perform offline really cool stuff 
However, the best part of all is it's going to open. It's going to say automatically save it to the clerk. So right here, you can see I got a shortcut saying get clip and it's going to output this text. Now I could click on show results just to make sure that I don't have any issues with showing the results. I can say space and right there. There we go. So now I can say play It's going to open up in another tab, which as you can see, I can say done to that. And as it's opening up in another tab, it's actually analyzing it. And let's wait for it. Say done. Come back over here. And we can see the output of that text. Now, here's the cool thing about it. I probably should have turned off. I don't believe. Yeah, I didn't believe it showed it. So this right here is basically what she told me for whatever was going on that day in school giving me an update but the cool thing about it is you can now see that i can come through here edit and do all that other cool stuff it doesn't get it exactly right but it gets it close enough and we're gonna change out the video right quick because i want to run it just one more time for you all right so I have a I have a folder with all my kids cutting me videos every day at the school. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with them, but we're going to just grab this video right here because it looks like it's already downloaded. Well, actually, we're going to grab this one. So I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to hit play. So you can see you can see it says today my to I guess day to day my day was I guess she was saying dad today my day, but we're going to look past that say play. And you can see we're going to cancel out of that. We're going to let it analyze the video. Now that it's analyzed, we should be able to go back over here. And let's say play. I'm not sure why we have to run it twice, but for whatever reason we do. Now I'm going to come back over here. And there we go. So you can see it changed up because now it says, hey, day, hey, day, today, my day was good. So to, and you can see she goes into what what she was doing, what she said a lot, a little bit more than her little sister. But she she had a fairly amount to say. So that is recognized speech is not perfect, but it is solid for what it for what it gives. You. OK, so this next one, I'm not sure if you know, but if you plug up your iPhone, it it tends to restrict your charge so for example usually if i plug up my iphone i'll turn around and then turn put my phone into low power mode to make it charge faster because if you don't then the iphone automatically throttles how much juice it take in trying to anticipate when you're going to take it off charge personally i don't like that i understand it's there to help save our battery but I don't want it to do that because nine times out of 10, I'm putting my phone on the charger. I usually go a little while without not being able to get more juice. So I want as much as I can get when I put it on the charge. To solve this, I have a simple automation that I use. So let me show you numbers. So here's number seven. If you look right here, it's one that says check if your device battery is, and you can see I put charging now. You can say is low on power mode or whatever, but I put is charging. So when I plug and you can see if name is yes, turn on low power mode. So if I turn this on right now, I'm going to change this to no, because I don't want it to put my phone into low power mode because I'm currently recording my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say play. And you can see it says, unfortunately, this one actually works or so put my phone into low power mode. So let's see if I change it back to yes, will it put my phone into low power mode? So I'm going to say play. Okay. And it didn't do it that time. So let's undo that. All right. I took my phone out of low power mode. So let's run it one more time. I'm going to hit play. And you can see this actually this specific shortcut isn't glitching because my phone isn't on charge. So it didn't put my phone into low power mode. But this is a really cool one, like I said, for that exact reason. But more importantly, if you want to link this to a shortcut or automation, you can kind of. Yeah, I know. I just realized the cable was in the in the shot shaking my head. Right. 
admittedly the shortcut that I'm finna show you now, the action I'm finna show you now, I don't really use it that much now because honestly, I just don't have that problem if I'm being completely honest. But I know it's a lot of people out there that would love this action, so I added it anyway. Let's take a look at number six. All right, so number six is really simple and it's just actual remaining space. So if I click play, it's gonna tell me how much space I have left. So on my iPhone, I got 639 gigabytes left, however, before I was able to buy a one terabyte phone, I used to run out of space all the time. And this was very, very helpful. And the cool thing about this is you can take this and you can actually do some automations with it to make it super cool. Like if, for example, if I wanted a automation that ran when I was below 500 gigabytes, well, I could do a if statement. So if it's lower than 500 gigabytes, then do X, Y, Z. It's really, really cool what you can do with this one. Don't sleep. How's it going? Will here. Do you get on productivity and tech? If so, you definitely in the right place on this channel. I talk about productivity, automation, and cool tech that catches my eye. Let's talk automation. Okay, so at the beginning of this video, we discovered that Toolbox Pro has over 130 plus actions inside of it. And sometimes finding that exact action you're looking for can be frustrating, especially if you're looking inside of Shortcuts app and you're looking for names you think it might be, that's when it becomes kind of cool to filter your actions by category. Let me show you what. So for number five, if we click right here, and you can see this is a simple action, get Toolbox Pro tools in category. Now we can, ch we can change it up if we want, but I highly recommend you use category. I'm gonna click play. And you can see now, if I wanna do something with calendar, depending upon what I'm trying to do, I can use this. So since we did some with images, let's just click on image. Now you can see an output it, we can switch it over to list. And here's the cool part about it. We can come through here and see if any of these make sense for whatever it is we're trying to do. This right here is invaluable. I highly recommend you use this, especially when it comes to learning all the capabilities of Toolbox. Like if, you, if you've been on this channel any amount of time, you know I tend to have shortcuts for quirky things at times. This is no exception. Let's take a look at number four. Okay, so this shortcut is all about showing you how to research TV shows. So you can see we're using two actions here. We're using search for TV shows containing whatever text we input, and then we got get details about the TV show action. So we're using two actions right here. So I guess you can see I cheated a little bit, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit play and we're gonna say Bel Air. I'm going to click done. And what you're going to notice is it gives me the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but it doesn't give me the TV show Bel Air. Now, it is very limited with the information it gives you. I mainly use this for when I want to check out a new TV show. Like, let's say a new TV show came out. Like, one of the ones I just found out about is FBI International. If I wanted to know how popular is FBI International, then I can run it through here. It tells me. And if there's no data there, then it tells me that, hey, it's probably something I want to wait on or something like that. Or if it's a lot of data there, then it tells me, hey, maybe this is worth me checking out at least the first episode. So that's how I use this. Not scientific at all. Okay, so with this next shortcut, I use this one because sometimes I just need to know what's going on with my device. And sometimes it's not a specific thing that I'm looking for. So this shortcut right here helps me to just basically know the health of my device. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So number three is get the devices. So device detail is what it's getting. The cool thing about it is if I click play, if I wanna know my physical memory, I can click right there and I can see it's five gigabytes. If I click play again, and let's say I wanted to know active processor count, it tells me six. If I click play again, and I wanna know, let's say OS version, it tells me right there I'm running iOS my version is 18, which is the beta version. So this shortcut right here, honestly, I really like it. But more importantly, by far, this is the action that I use the most out of all the Toolbox Pro actions because I'm always looking at the data on my device. 
All right, so coming in at number two is honestly a very, very useful one. Now, I must admit, I don't use it as much as I used to because I switched over to Adobe Scan, but if I just need something really quick done, then I will use it because that's what it's for. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Number two is going to be scan documents action. Now, the cool thing about it, if we click on show info, we can see that we can scan the documents. We can wait it wait to return the result, all that cool stuff. Now, if I click play, I don't actually have a document to scan, but you can see it opens up and let's see if I can scan. Oh, okay, so it scanned my clipboard, but that's what I wanted to show you that it keeps scanning. Like it doesn't stop scanning it'll keep scanning until you're done that i really like that but i'm gonna cancel that i'm gonna discard those three and that's the main part that i wanted to show you if we come back over here we we're able to do it ourselves now it's on auto so if we click play again you can see that it's on auto right here so if we go to manual it no longer will keep snapping you have to actually snap it in order for it to go and then you're able to move it around and have more control over it then you can retake or keep scan so it's completely up to you and how you use it but i use this for a nice little coming in at number one is an app that allows me to scale my images super quick let me show you what i mean so as you can see right here if we open it up it's literally just one action so i'm going to click play I'm going to actually navigate over to an image so you can see right here we're at we're going to just click on fireplace. I'm going to say open. I'm going to say done. And you can see if we click into this and now we leave out, you can see that it scaled the image to 1920 by 1281. Now, typically when I'm using this, I make sure I have a 4K image. I always export all my images in 4K. So when I run it through here, it's gonna give me that 1920 by 1080, which is the thumbnail size for YouTube. So I don't have to do any resizing or anything like that. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this specific app or shortcut run. All right, so here we are at Toolbox Pro. And as you can see, you have all the shortcuts. They also have it broke down by category. As you can see, any ones you want to know more about, you can literally click into it. It's going to give you a short description. It's going to explain it. And you can scroll down. It's going to show you required parameters as well as optional parameters as well as output. So it's really, really cool. Like I can't say enough cool things about Toolbox Pro. The most important thing is make sure you go over there and look at all the different type of actions because I just showed the top 10 that jumped out at me. It might be an action up in there that you've been looking for for shortcuts to be able to do that it hasn't been able to do and Toolbox Pro might make that possible. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. I got a lot more of these videos coming your way just talking about different actions and add-ons for shortcuts. With that being said, I catch you in the next video. Till next time.